This is the technical difficulties for playing Citation Needed. Joining me today, he reads books. You know it's Chris Joel. Gary's line just before Gary said it, so Gary's isn't funny. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's favourite, Gary Brannan. Gary Brannan. And now on ITV1, our new Saturday night entertainment game show. Join Stephen Mulhern in Get Out, That's My Trout. <laughs> I'm the bounciest man on the internet, Matt Gray. And I'll be following up on ITV2 with your reaction. <laughs> In front of me, I've got an article from Wikipedia and these folks can't see it. Every fact they get right is a point and a ding and a special prize for particularly good answers, which is... Oh, yeah. They're getting better at that. Yeah. Today, we are talking about the Crazy Apes incident. The Crazy Apes or the Crazy Apes? Because one of those <laughs> sounds brilliant. Uh, the Crazy Apes incident, also known as the CSX 8888 incident. Is it Chinese? They like apes, don't they? Oh, bloody Ooh. hell. You oh. so, uh, No, you're completely and utterly wrong. <laughs> it's um, a lucky number, isn't yes, it? Yes, that would be a lucky number. This is A, not in China, and B, ve- I nearly said two there. This is, <laughs> this is A, not in China, and B, not lucky. Was it unlucky? CSX Transportation okay. is the company in question. A flight? No. Public transport? Uh, more a freight carrier. Is it a runaway train? Oh, Did it, it go is. around? Oh, damn it. <laughs> I wanted to do the whole first line. Is well, it that film? Oh, which film? There was a film with the guy that played Kirk in the new Star Treks. That it, would be Chris Pine? Yes, I think. And it was all undercranked. Uh, artificially sped up footage of American trains moving really slowly. I saw about ten minutes of that. It was ter- terrible. It was yeah. amazing. <laughs> was it that? Yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> it's called. So it's got a terrible pun name, hasn't it? It's something film. like just Runaway. Runaway, isn't it? Unstoppable. 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 There we go. Denzel Washington and that's... Chris Pine. Yes. Yay! It, you and think. you've skipped a huge amount of the article here because that is the film based on this incident. So we've got a run. We've got a train. What is running away? Yes. And not cause it's scared. Cause it naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I remember from the film, it was running away towards a city that had a very tight bend in it and there was something that it couldn't fall off and destroy and it had terrible things inside it. (laughs) Now, why did your movie pitch career never take off? (laughs) Have you not heard me describing things before? (laughs) Yeah, but never so compelling. (laughs) You're right uh, with some of that. It did have bad things in it. Was it radiation-y? No. No. No, it was, was it chemically? Yes, I'm going to give a point for that, and I feel like I shouldn't. Chemically bad things? Yeah, thousands of gallons of phenol. Is that a solvent? Uh, phenolic acid. Is it an acid? <laughs> <laughs> not, Can we not, not just get a runaway train of Gaviscon to hit it? Cause that'd probably... oh. <laughs> yeah, you're also right uh, that the movie had Devil's Curve in the city of Stanton. Is there actually a city of Stanton? I don't know if there's a city of Stanton, there certainly isn't a Devil's Curve. Is it, is it just a bad curve? No, the, uh, the train, the actual real train, which was CSX 8888, that was the registry number, uh, was not headed towards anything particularly dangerous. So Hollywood found a vaguely boring, but someone thought, oh, if we, if we made this worse than it actually was, it would be compelling kind of film. Yes. I like the thought of someone sat at home with their kid's train set, trying to think, how can I make this film exciting? And they just kick the little bit of track and it bends, and he goes... There we have it. (laughs) This is notable for one particular aspect of it. But apart from the fact that there were no significant injuries or anything from it, it's notable for one thing. They had a film made about it. Two things. (laughs) They tried to do the sort of stupid sh** that you see in the film where they pull a train alongside and somebody leapt across to try and slow it down. Yes. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So someone having seen a film tried to do something they might see in a film. Well, it was a little more thought out than that, but yes, this this was rescued. Guys damning with such faint praise. (laughs) (laughs) So first of all, what went wrong? What's being what's happening here? Could they not catch up to it and pull up next to it to do the 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 jumpy thing? How would you pull up next to it? Was it a single track railway? Yes. <laughs> and they come up with all this idea, so we'll get this, we'll put it up... Oh. No, no, they, they knew what it was on. And it's also notable for how far it went. Why is it running away? Well, that's how the show works, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, why was it running away? Well, all right, if I zip my anner up ever so slightly, they should have vacuum braking. So if they're breaking the vacuum pipe, the brakes should come on. So has the driver collapsed or something? Oh, you were so close until the end. Yeah, I'm still going to give you a point because... Hit the point button, you dick! <laughs> uh, this starts in a classification yard or a marshalling yard, as it's known in the UK. So that's where they move stuff about and put them on... Uh, the, and the freight gets moved and... 
Yes. yes. Trains. Yeah, trains that's... are made up into trains. Yeah. 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 Well, a, tra- a mummy dad train and a daddy train make a baby train. <laughs> there are different types of yard. What's a hump yard? <laughs> you shouldn't without connecting. It's over a hump. It's, it's a hill and it runs down via gravity. And you can you can break it at the top by popping things between the rails to catch the wheels to slow them slightly. Someone in a big room goes a big lever and goes like that and they stop. Goes what? Well, I can't do it again. He's already passed, hasn't he? <laughs> there's another one. There's another one coming. <laughs> it's a different lever before anyone says anything else. Uh, there's also a gravity yard. Uh, I, I want to see the anti-gravity yard first. <laughs> that's, for, that's for moving them between tracks because you can just shove them sideways gently. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's just a hill. They just run down them. Yeah, it's it's literally right. The trains are here, and you push them down the hill. You start them going, and then you just have to align all the points up and the switches now, up. So it is goes that the where right it way. went wrong? Yes. Did they align them to the output instead of to a siding, and then they just kept going? So it's it's not actually a gravity yard here. It's, it's a flat yard. But the engineer uh, on the train noticed that one of the switches or points uh, is misaligned. So what does he do? Hit he it with a big hammer. Well, he can't brake fast enough. He knows the train's not going to stop. Did he until. jump off? Yes, he did. Ah, now, what you've done there, mate, now what you've done there is you've, you've left your train off and it's going all of its own. At no point is this Thomas and the train will stop for not having a driver. Yes, he did, uh, he did actually apply the air brake, but the air brake was disconnected because it's in the middle of a yard and they don't activate yes, it there. Yes, yeah, yeah, and you might only have the engine brake which won't stop a full train. Yes, but it did turn off the dead man's switch. Now. Because the brake's pushed. Now, that is very silly. If you take the keys out, you can't actually stop it, can you? No. Do you, does anyone here know what a dynamic brake on a train is? Oh, God. Is that... I oh, know. That's, that's what the APT had, isn't it? That's, that's fluid dynamic brake, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. that, was what, that, that was liquid. That was, that was a mm. hydraulic brake, wasn't it? A, a dynamic brake is using the throttle to power the brakes. That's it. It recharges the brake oh. cylinders by the reserve energy because there are electric motors rather than just a diesel engine driving the wheels. It's a diesel engine driving an electric motor and you use that to recharge your brake circuits. Yes. Is it like using a flywheel as a brake? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. moving yeah. kinetic energy into the other system. Sorry, yeah. I'm going just a bit engineering no, <laughs> intrigue now. <laughs> I like the fact that they're all having these discussions while the train was running away out of the yard behind them. <laughs> what happens if, for example, you fail to set the dynamic brake and then send power to it? Ah, now, does that just make the brakes not work even better? Uh, no, it's just going to accelerate. Oh, shit. <laughs> he just turned the <laughs> oh, um, oh, shit. You've just made it go faster there, mate. Yes. And this... then he jumped off. He hurt, yes. Now, now what he really did there... <laughs> this is America, right? Mm-hmm. A thing I know about America is that it's big. Yeah? Yes. Cool. Point. Uh, <laughs> so, and America has big, long, straight bits of railway with nothing. Yes. Was this a diesel engine and did they just wait for the diesel to run out? They've got quite a bit of diesel on now, haven't they? Yes. Did they just wait? They've got quite a bit of America too. <laughs> no, they didn't, but you're along some of the right lines. When I said this was Third notable... Uh, um, when I said it was notable, I mean it was notable for something in particular about this. Did they try and siphon the diesel out while it was driving? Someone oh. just comes up with a hose pipe, sticks in and goes... The brakes aren't working! <laughs> Is this the train that's travelled on its own the longest? Uh, no, I don't know if it's officially the longest, but it is certainly a very, very long distance. It went for two hours at somewhere around 50 miles an hour. Whoa! <laughs> that's nearly 100 miles. <laughs> yes! <laughs> There are all sorts of movie plot threats and ideas that you've come up with here. What are they actually going to try and do to it? What's the practical solution to Runaway Train? Get one of those little carts. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Well, it has the pumpy thing on and go dead fast till you catch up with it down a hill. And then you climb up all along the top and get in the driver's cabin and and, and turn it off. Do that, but with another locomotive. (laughs) Yes! (laughs) Actually, you could just bring something out in front of it and break it, right? Uh, they also planned to do that. They didn't actually need to do that in time. Did it crash by that point? No. No, they, um, what's what's the plan here? So first of all, they use something called a, a portable derailer. So they, they want to jump the, the wheels off the track so then it, it's grinding more than driving and then it'll just slow down because it hasn't got enough grip. Yeah, well, more than that, it will knock the wheels off the track and... Just, I mean, that's not a great place for a locomotive to be in. At this point, you get the police coming out and throwing a stinger trap underneath it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Trying to pop the tire. Oh, it doesn't have tires. <laughs> now. So what is it now? What you did there? The police did try to do something to Shoot it. Shoot it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Because it's America and the police. <laughs> what with? The f cannon? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were trying to hit something on it. The fuel lines. The brake. Um, uh, not quite. The driver. They have said that pillow crew jumped off. <laughs> They're trying to put a fire at the fuel. Well, it's diesel, so it won't ignite, but yeah, I suppose you could shoot the fuel as or the tanks. The fuel tanks. Uh, the emergency fuel cutoff switch. You know, that's, that's close They're enough. They're trying to hit a switch. <laughs> yes, it, it didn't work. They're just I've dicking around. It's moving for <laughs> target, isn't it? So we now have runaway train that has been shot at by the police. <laughs> Unsuccessfully shot at. With the accelerator being a bit stuck down. Yeah. And the, the other brake being on but essentially being completely burned out by this. What's the plan? What do they go with? We have experienced railroad engineers here. Put it in reverse somehow, by the power of the mind. You sort of suggested this earlier. <laughs> what, drive another vehicle, couple it, and then use those brakes? Yes. So, the, two engineers in a train coming the other way, pulled off... Coming the... Oh, well, okay. I was going to say, coming pass, the other way. Waiting yeah. for that train to pass. Mm. <clears throat> and then chased it. That must have looked awesome. <laughs> yes. When was this? Did they video it? Uh, there is video of the runaway train, but not of this actual moment. Is it the that's 70s? A real, that's a massive oversight. Uh, 2001. Yeah, yeah, massive oversight. I get a helicopter over this, you got rights. So, an engineer with 31 years of service. Nice, it's his last day before retirement. <laughs> I think it was in the film. It actually was in the film. Oh, of course it and, was. And a rookie conductor with one year's experience. <laughs> Listen to me, kid. I am. Looks down the imaginary camera. The engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so I looks at picture of dead wife. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that film thinking it was so formulaic that it actually happened like that. Yes. Then the uh, the train master. <laughs> <laughs> Behold <laughs> the train master <laughs> stood in front of it on the tracks and said. HALT! <laughs> it's the train master Brunel. <laughs> oh. No, it's Topham Hat. Just with his little straight arms. You have been a very naughty engine. <laughs> suddenly then, they listen and Ringo has suddenly appeared in the back of the train to narrate this shit. Wait a minute, did the young engineer try and go first and the old engineer said, no, you've got too much to live for at the last <laughs> second. Pull him out of the way and do it himself. Yeah, train master John Hosfield ran alongside the train. The, ran? They've got it down to like 11 miles an hour. Oh, now, right, so he okay. sprints along, mile an hour. climbs That's aboard, still a quick run, that. and shuts down the engine. Yes, uh, they have another train up front, uh, ready to try and mm. ram it. <laughs> Not quite ram it, but you know, slow it down by breaking. Ram it, front. ram it. Fine. <laughs> yes. What happened to the engineer who first made the mistake? Way back. So it's now stopped. They've recovered it. It's going back to the yard. The engineer at the start. What happened to him? He was it? made to lie down on the rails oh. while they backed it up. Oh. <laughs> Did he have to walk all the way to pick it back up again? <laughs> it's actually a bit hard to work out because they never released the name of the engineer. Yeah, I don't think I would either. <laughs> because in, in aviation, you, um, you don't do that. You don't go for blame. You go for, let's work out what happened and then work out how to make it not happen again. Yes. And then leave it at that rather than... Uh, it's it's an, a blameless culture, whatever they call yeah. it. So then things yeah. get reported. You in the end, it's always systems or, or, or technology that's eventually caused a problem. And if not, there, if you it? think you're going to get blamed for something, you're not going to report that something happened and then you don't get a good safety. Yeah, you, uh, it's called a just culture. Just and culture, you've literally it. answered several of the questions I was about yeah. to ask. Yeah. Have, have two points. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so what's happened to the engine in the end? Um, is it on, is it, has it been destroyed as a warning to others? <laughs> <laughs> Is it in a retirement home? What are they called? Museum. Those are two very different things. <laughs> a retirement home for objects is a museum. Okay, okay, okay right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> but neither is he right. But that's, that, that doesn't work the other way around. Like, a retirement home is not a museum of people. <laughs> no. Several railway museums tried to buy it, but officials replied they did not feel it worthy of preservation. Yes, because <laughs> Please in the museum, forget this. <laughs> the train will tell the other trains how to run away. Oh. Dangerous uh, knowledge. Uh, and it was torn down and rebuilt as part of uh, a regular rebuild process. So it is, no, it is now, bits of it are now in other places. It got hung, drawn and quartered. <laughs> I am, not, yeah, basically, yeah, that's pretty much what hung, drawn and quartering was. I've got the idea now of all these bits from other trains and these bits are sentient and suddenly at some point, and here's the second film, uh, <laughs> lots of trains run away. I'm getting a sense this second one was written by Stephen King. Ideally me. But yeah, all right, I'll sell the rights. Uh, so at the end of the show, congratulations, Gary. You win this one.
Uh, you win the rights to your screenplay being produced. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, you win a shirt that exposes your midriff, sponsored by a series of Korean boy bands. It's a K-pop crop top. Oh. <laughs> With that, we say thank you to Chris Joel, to Gary Branagh, to Matt Gray, I've been Tom Scott, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.